Sergei Pugachev. He was once known as Putin's banker. He had a business empire worth an estimated $15 billion. This was a man at the center of things, right next to Vladimir Putin. But today, he's a fugitive and an enemy of the man he once brought to power. So what exactly is his relationship to Putin? And how did he go from the heights of power to a life on the run? This is the story of one of the most mysterious Russian oligarchs still alive today. Now, like most most Russian oligarchs, Sergei Pugachev is generally camera shy. That might explain why most of us have never heard of him. He rarely gives interviews to journalists and he'd much rather live quietly in his mansion in southern France. Safe behind thick stone walls and an extensive security detail. And who can blame him? After all, the past two decades have been rough for Russians living abroad. In 2006, former KGB agent Alexander Litvinenko was poisoned in London with a rare radioactive substance. In 2012, Alexander Perpolichny died mysteriously while jogging near his home in Surrey, having also been poisoned. And the following year, it was Boris Berezovsky. He was a man who accused Roman Abramovich of having forced him out of their massively successful aluminium company. Berezovsky was found dead on the bathroom floor of his Berkshire mansion in 2013. And strangely, the case was never investigated, which explains why Sergei Pugachev might have been next. At least that's what he feared when his bodyguards discovered a suspicious package taped to the underside of his car. Not too long before, some men from Moscow's Mafia had come to him with a sinister ultimatum. After taking him onto a yacht off the coast of France, these men had told him that he had to pay them $350 million. They said that if he didn't, they were gonna kill his family. But Pugachev refused to pay. And so, as you can probably imagine, he was feeling ever so slightly tense when he spotted those mysterious packages on his car. And after the counter-terrorism unit had come and gone, Pugachev decided it was time to leave the UK altogether. That night, without even telling his family, he packed up and headed off to a new mansion in France. But this dramatic situation begs a question. Who was it that wanted so badly to get rid of Pugachev? Pugachev himself claims that it was Putin. But if so, why? Well, to arrive at some answers, we have to go back to the 1990s, a time when Putin was a KGB officer just back from Eastern Germany, and Pugachev was a businessman on the rise. It may be hard to imagine now, but Putin was once just an ordinary guy. He believed in his country and he wanted to return it to its former glory, but no one could have imagined that one day he'd be its leader. Now that all changed when Boris Yeltsin, the highly unpopular president, unexpectedly resigned in December 1999. It was the eve of a new millennium and things were looking grim in Russia. Yeltsin had come to power riding a wave of revolution, but his policies had driven the country into economic ruin. During his resignation speech, Yeltsin asked the viewers to forgive him for all of their, quote, dreams that never came true. And at that moment, the country still reeling from the Soviet Union's collapse seemed to be facing yet another crisis. But while many Russians wondered who would be the next leader, Sergei Pugachev already had the answer. Vladimir Putin. As a close family friend of Yeltsin's, Pugachev was instrumental in pushing Yeltsin to pick Putin as his successor. And they had good reason to do so because they assumed that the relatively unknown government bureaucrat would essentially act as a puppet for them. They thought that they could control Putin, but they underestimated him. Little did they know that as soon as Putin came into power, he created such a system in which government positions actually became money-making machines for his friends. The truth is, and very few actually realize this, but Sergei Pugachev played an absolutely fundamental role in putting Putin into the position he's in today. But now he's in hiding, fearing for his life. So what caused the fallout? Well, you see, Pugachev's businesses included two shipyards worth about $3.5 billion, the world's biggest mine worth about $4 billion, and a huge list of luxury real estate. But all of that has now been seized by the Russian state. Here's the thing, in the wake of the financial crash of 2008, the Russian government provided Pugachev's bank, yep, he owned a bank, with $1 billion in loans. But the bank ended up going under and the money from the loans seems to have disappeared. Now, 
The Kremlin claims that they know exactly what happened to that money. They say Pugachev funneled $700 million into a Swiss bank account. And of course, they claim that that money rightfully belonged to the Russian state. The thing is, Swiss prosecutors looked into the matter and they couldn't find anything against Pugachev. But all the same, the Kremlin hounded him for years in the UK court system. They obtained a court order that froze his assets, meaning he had no way of accessing funds. And they tracked his every move. Which leads me back to those mysterious packages that turned up in 2015. Those turned out to actually be tracking devices planted on his car by people working for the Kremlin. And it was a huge fall from grace. We're talking about a man who helped bring Putin to power, but was now clearly being pushed out of the inner circle. But why? Well, just like the real Mafia, once you're in, leaving can prove to be very difficult and deadly. Pugachev had acquired too many secrets about Putin and the corruption of the Kremlin. He'd become a liability and he knew it, which is why in 2007, he actually applied for French citizenship. Of course, he owned real estate in France and the UK, and then there was his relationship with Alexandra Tolstoy. She was a half-Russian London socialite and distant relative of the famous Leo Tolstoy. Now, to Putin, who'd spent his whole life in the former Soviet territory, the idea of Pugachev's relationship with an Englishwoman was baffling, and Pugachev claims that this may have been one of the main reasons why Putin turned against him. As a punishment for trying to leave Russia for France, the Kremlin moved swiftly. They seized a hotel project that he'd been working on in the heart of Moscow. They took his $3.5 billion worth of shipyards and sold them to one of Putin's allies for what amounted to chump change. And his $4 billion mining project? Well, that was sold to the Chechen president for another ridiculously low price. In the blink of an eye, Pugachev's $15 billion empire had all but disappeared. After so many years at the top, Pugachev found himself watching from afar as the Kremlin dismantled his life's work. But it wasn't just his professional life that was being dismantled. His personal life was also falling apart. In 2008, around the time that the Kremlin set its eyes on Pugachev, so too did Alexandra Tolstoy. Alexandra has a fascinating life of her own. As I mentioned, she's related to Leo Tolstoy, famed author of War and Peace and Anna Karenina. This was a lady who'd ridden on horseback across Siberia and even made a TV show about it. She met Pugachev after being hired as his English teacher. And given that she was struggling financially at the time, she recalls how thrilling it was to meet the handsome, powerful Pugachev. Quote, it was electric, she says. By all accounts, it was love at first sight. They traveled the world together. They owned a giant $40 million property in the Caribbean. And they owned not one, but two houses in Chelsea right next door to each other. One was for their kids. The other was for the madly in love couple. But the pressure was building. And by 2015, when he came home to find his cars wired up with those strange packages, his life quickly unraveled. Of course, fleeing to France without telling Alexandra couldn't have helped their relationship. But his violent attacks were what really drove them apart. You see, she claims that at times he got so upset that he'd physically attack her. So when he asked her to join him at his hideout in France, she refused. By 2016, the once promising relationship had come to a halt. Now, Pugachev is living alone in his French mansion with little more than a nice view and $70 million, a fraction of the money he once had. Now, he did try to to sue the Russian Federation to reclaim his once vast fortune, but so far the courts have ruled against him. So at 59 years old, the man once dubbed Putin's banker now resembles a wealthy retiree, and he claims he couldn't be happier. He says he's glad that he's no longer in the toxic environment of the Kremlin, and he's now become a very vocal critic of Putin and other oligarchs. Oligarchs like Roman Abramovich, who he claims owe their wealth directly to Putin. Sergei Pugachev may no longer have the wealth and power he once did, but at least he's free. Hey, if you want to learn more about Roman Abramovich and how he made his fortune, check out this video next. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next video.